apartment town. And... Well, I, I feel like that, that's kind of how you design the show is so that it could be what it is in the moment or whatever. Yeah. And... Right. <clears throat> there was a guy when I, when I was rapping at the end and I was like kind of being escorted off and I wouldn't stop rapping. Yeah. There was a there was a guy yelling something like like shouting, uh, and I I can't get it out of my head. Like I really am so curious. Like, did what, it feel disdainful? I don't. I, I I projected that onto it. Yeah. Okay. But but then there's if it was disdainful, there there's the subsets of ironic disdain to, to you know to be funny. Like you suck. Get out of here because that's my shtick or whatever. That I'm the bad guy. Yeah. Uh, and then there's genuine disdain, which I, I, I just, I have to, yeah, I have to go there in my head. Like who, what, what was that guy doing? The one guy in the whole audience that was like, what, what was he saying? Was he saying you're great it's to please stay and keep rapping? <laughs> was, he, was he saying get off the stage? And if he was saying get off the stage, did, was he trying to help the show? Yeah. Or, was, or did he really? We both do really comics, and uh, or we're both comics, and and it, it's the age old debate with any heckler: where are you trying to help, and you just don't know the rules, or right. do you want to derail this thing? Of because on Harvey Town, the rules are a little different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that a hearing aid? It is a hearing aid. I should have two, but one of them I stepped on. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> How right. bad? How bad is your hearing without the hearing aid? Uh, well, with these in, it's great. <laughs> oh, I, can, sorry. I can make the world as loud as I need it to be. Right. But uh, without it, I mean, I'm pretty, uh, I'm, I'm pretty fucked without them. Fairly anyway. I was born that way. My mom has the same hearing loss pattern, and her dad, and probably his mom. Is it a, a a gradual thing, or were you just born with worse hearing? You're born with bad hearing, but it's also gradual. Like my grandpa, when you talk to him, and my mom's way worse off than I am. So it's it's you know, I'm I'm going to a dark place no matter what. <laughs> oh man, that's a bummer. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's, it's certainly better for you than it was for your grandpa because, like, I remember reading somewhere that, like. Out of that, the, the suicide rate is the highest. Among, I know I'm really going to a dark place. The suicide <laughs> rate was. I'm sure this isn't true anymore because of the internet. Because right. Because it's like there's so many ways to connect with people, but that the suicide rate was higher, highest among uh, hearing disabled people, like higher than the than the blind, higher than. And I, I was like, wait, that, that's really weird. In when what you, when you, subset of people? Like, <laughs> uh, uh, what, you, what about Holocaust victims? Are they also? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. I, no, I think you're. I think I think it's a chart comparing <laughs> like like suicide rates uh, cross referenced with uh, people who have some kind of uh, uh, disability. I guess I, it makes sense because it is isolating, right? You know? And humans don't want to be alone. And if you're blind, you can still just sit in a room and talk to people. When they say like if you're pregnant, you should get down and talk to the thing, even though it's like just a weird growing bean of a human. Right. So I guess the human voice is kind of important. Yeah. But anyway. But we got we got. I mean, I I grew up in chat rooms and stuff. I grew up I grew up communicating with c- connecting to people in a medium that did not involve hearing their voice at all. Right. Um, so I'm sure that statistic, if it was true, is probably pretty pretty outmoded. I encountered one time a group of uh, deaf people that were they were kind of the militant like the Black Panthers, right? The, the people, people who don't who don't don't want the cochlear implants, yeah, and they don't want to assim- like they think people should learn sign language and right. they don't want to learn to do braille or whatever. Or uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, they don't want to learn to like uh, read lips and stuff like right. that because uh, because uh, because they're a different species, a different yeah. Race. They feel like they're they're their own community i guess yeah. and would you uh would you be down if our associate producer jeff filmed this oh, yeah, interaction yeah. yeah cool no problem cool uh, it's it seems silly at face value because it's like to, to us it's like oh well it's a it's a handicap why, right. why are you why why and then when you really think about it you go well wait a minute we have all these cultural like schisms that are based on cheekbones and like yeah uh, and, it, and it is a thing where you're like oh you're born that way yeah you exactly know, so not, you really it, are even it, more so than a black person is different than a white person right you yeah. are like really like born into a completely different culture yeah and so being proud of that and 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 
and and keeping to your own and like 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 trying and, and yeah being isolationist isn't actually that weird a yeah, concept I, I'm, you know on the one hand in a way we decided that people are black but you don't really decide that somebody is blind right well, that's right. even more so. Yeah, I know. Yeah, race is an artificial construct. It's like it has to really be. You have to be clued into it. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna uh, do like a, a little, very short, introducing the fact that we're here, and then we're gonna start the interview right. proper. If that's cool. No problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are here in Burbank, California, uh, with Dan Harmon. Uh, last night was the uh, conclusion of the Harmon Country Tour, and uh, Dan was nice enough to give us an interview. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, at several points during the tour, you tried to establish a uh, an actual constitution for Harmon Town. Yeah. Um, uh, but it never really took. So if if you had to put that on paper today what would it look like to you it would still just say uh everyone has the right to do whatever they want until it interferes with the right of anyone else to do whatever they want in which case dot 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 question mark (laughs) uh i can't uh, because we desperately need we need to work smarter not harder on developing some kind of open source piece of code, I yeah. think I think what I've what I, one thing that I've decided going on this tour and constantly coming back up against that wall is that maybe we are a post document species now. Maybe we can like like the Constitution, um, these things written on parchment that are lists of of rules uh, ensuring people's freedom and happiness and stuff, like. That was state of the art. Um, right. it, 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 not only in terms of the paper being state of the art uh, information storage, but the state of the art in terms of like the, the, the philosophy. Right. Like, like, like how you couldn't get more revolutionary, more subversive, more um, uh, pragmatic, uh, and, and minimalist than to, to than to have a bunch of guys form a colony and say, okay, we're making a list uh, and we're going to, that are, these are going to be rules that guarantee that we don't get bogged down on a bunch of rules right? Uh, by some Yahoo with a crown on. So, you know, a couple hundred years later, we've gotten a little bogged down um, because as Thomas Jefferson was worried about, like, um, when you make something the domain of lawyers, like it, the noose is never going to get wider. Uh, <laughs> he, he, I think he was one of the foremost uh, 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 skeptics uh, 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 of the uh, First Amendment. That could, uh, Snopes that and fact check me. But <laughs> I remember somebody telling me that like, Thomas Jefferson early on was like really cautious about the, this idea of freedom of speech being written down as a right. Right. Um, and and I, if it was him, then his argument was um, we are going to make this a, a legal uh, right. And then it's going to be up to lawyers to decide – when your speech is free and how free it's allowed to be. And it's going to start with fire in a crowded theater being the exception. We can all understand that. And mm-hmm. it's going to end with, it's never, the, the, it's never going to get more liberal. It's only going to get more and more constricted. Right. Um, so anyways, the, uh, I, if, 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 if we were to colonize the moon, if we were to start a, start a little compound and grow potatoes and do ayahuasca with each other and have drum circles, whatever, whatever <laughs> Harmon Town or your own personal like idea would be, your own utopia, if you were going to have some kind of constitution, so to speak, I think at this point in this post-internet world, what we're ready for – excuse me, I just burped while I'm talking <laughs> – um, what we're ready for is some something that would resemble more like computer code, something that that h- human beings can easily be taught at a very early age and also memorize and and walk around with, so that in 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 the event of any conflict between two or more people, um, I hate to say it, but like ants, uh, like insects, we have a protocol yeah. that we engage with each other. We don't have to take it to a third person who has to be elected every four years. Kind of like has, Asimov's robotics laws, right? Very much, yeah. The, like like a code, like a like a like a like a syllogism, a ge- geometric proof. Well, it's like it's like 
basically correcting the chemical reactions that we already exist through, yeah. you know, like, 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 like Vul- Vul- Vulcans and Star Trek and that mythology. Like, I, I think the idea was that once upon a time, them and Romulans were the same species. Right. And mm-hmm. then, uh, and then Vulcans decided to mimetically evolve. They, yeah. they, they, they decided enough was enough and they had to control themselves and actually became a different species because they decided they needed to. Yeah. Um, it's kind of interesting. Cause I, 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 we, no, I mean, I, I, no, nobody's more kind of like hedonistic and, and primal than, than me. Well, lots of people are. What am I talking about? I'm as primal and hedonistic as the next guy. Like I am as lazy and like impulsive and, and as, and as much in favor of us being impulsive and animalistic, recognizing that we're animals, um, forgiving ourselves for the fact that we're animals. Um, uh, the, the, uh, at the same time, we 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 know now for sure, as the debate rages on between whether or not the environment makes us who we are, or or whether we're born the way we are, um, it's probably some some a little combination of both. While that debate rages on, and until it ever gets resolved psychologically, what we do know for sure is number one, we are affected by our environment. Mm-hmm. Human beings do absolutely become influenced by the way they grow up. They learn because we're adaptable. We're designed to be dropped on the North Pole and be able to survive there. We'll have a hundred words for snow if you do that to us. If we're if you grow up in ancient Sparta, then you're going to be you know you would, your definition of right and wrong is going to have a little more emphasis on on winning wars. Right. Um, the 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 so so he, here now we're like modern. We like Twinkies and we and we, we play video games and we're we're, we're having a little bit of a you know like breakdown because on, on the surface of everything we're very gentle and all this stuff because we can afford to be but then also because we, 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 there's not a heavy emphasis in capitalism on like morality we kind of have weird shit going on underneath and we don't know how to sort it out and we argue with each other privately about it anyways the what we know for sure you can edit that all, like a lot of that out <laughs> um, the, what we know for sure know is that people are 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 affected by their environment that they adapt to it we also know this other really important thing that people change their environment so those two things knowing those two things and really and I, I i don't think anyone can argue with those two facts people change the world around them and the world changes people that means that we can mimetically evolve like we did it with the alphabet we we have written language we're not born with it but it will probably never go away and if there was a some kind of like catastrophe that kind of wiped out our entire um, culture but a couple people survived and Adam and Eve did and they lost the alphabet they would they would be they would end up creating written language again yeah. uh, they w- and, and, and I, 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 who knows it's more of a Duncan Trussell conversation whether or not they would <laughs> develop the alphabet even more quickly because somehow it's in our genes now that we did it I don't know but but but, but we, we, we created written language and it absolutely changed everything about about how, how we think right uh, and, and, and and interact with each other and and, and so you know, we created a constitution and it changed the way that we govern ourselves and each other. And, uh, and so you could you create a new society, create a, a new golden rule, or maybe just stick to the golden rule and, and kind of just like concretize it, like make it like airtight and kind of, this is the law. This is the way that humans uh, resolve conflict with each other. This is the game of patty cake we enter when when I want something and it overlaps your, with your desire to have something, and then there will always be a resolution, and then we walk away and 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 and, and repeat on a loop. And if it's a hundred people versus fifty people, it's, it's, there's a permutation of that, but it's always the same, and it's like a thing you can tattoo on your hand or you know mm-hmm. or put on a put on a satellite flag, fling it into space, and aliens will find it and go, oh, these guys they. They got their shit together. They figured out the the moral tesseract. You know? Yeah. Do you think it exists? Does this rule somewhere out there exist? I don't know. I mean, I, it might be one of those things that's right under our nose. I mean, you know, your mom always told you, you know, don't 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 hang out with people that don't want to hang out with you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like when you were talking about the breakdown, like the breakdown that we're currently in as a society, I feel like uh, like we've kind of put ourselves in this trap where uh, like we have 
no excuse to not evolve to be better people, right? But also zero motivation yeah, to do we, so. <laughs> yes, that is precisely what it is. We are, we are, we are, we 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 have become the Dan Harmon of civilizations. Like you know, we we are, we we have we have all the permission in the world to be better people, and we just keep kind of scratching our ass and like like kind of preening in the mirror. And so then, it, 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 you know, that statement we are, we have become the day is is Harmon Town more for you than anybody else? Is, it, it, is it more for you to get your shit together? Uh, yeah, or, well, definitely. Get on the ball. It is my therapy for sure. I mean, yeah. you, know, you have the conceit of let's let's form a colony, let's go to the moon. I think that draws people in, and, and it's exciting, and it's like like it. You, um, in a, and I, we can take that conceit as seriously as we want to. Like mm. that's the beautiful thing about 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 thought experiments is that they can, you know, like you can start mumbling into a glass in in in, in the in the corner bar that you think the government should be retooled and. You, you you can decide how seriously you want to take that. Like yeah. you can you can create a blog and where you get serious about it. You can invite people to that discussion. You can start to have conventions. You'll eventually get tear gassed, but but you you're you're theoretically allowed to take it all the way up to and including uh, overthrowing uh, yeah, your existing revolution. system and and and, and su- su- supplanting it with your own thing. But it, or let alone like going off on your own to a, to an oil platform and like 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 having your own money and hanging out with yeah. your girlfriend and college yourself a country but 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 so so that that conceit is is what other people m- might get out of it in a in a very real sense week after week at harmontown in the back of that comic book store that is absolutely my version of therapy that is how i keep myself from going insane to talk about these things and to feel like i have permission to 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 be whatever i am mm-hmm. that that comes through opening my mouth and letting like like thoughts go out into a microphone um since since you've started the podcast how has your perception on like dan Harmon fans uh changed like through i mean even before the tour just uh it definitely has like i i've 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 grown to i i i, I love them even more like 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 the because i think when i was uh in my 20s we did comic books like rob shab published his own comic book i was a writer on that so my earliest experiences with fan interactions were at comic-con um uh and signing books for people that were wandering up that liked rob's comic book Mm -hmm. and uh and I, i remember getting furious like angry with people for not having like social skills like people who are just inadvertently rude or or don't don't really understand that you're not a public utility because you're you you made a thing that they like like they or they just you know we we came to have this buzzword of aspergers or like like a spectrum and like, yeah. like, like we came to kind of diagnose it which helped helped us all like as a community we kind of what we used to call nerds and in 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 anger we started calling nerds and and, and lovingly and then became like a you know a classic character on big bang theory like we put we (laughs) know what to point at now and go okay i get it you're you're so smart that the other parts of your brain are like not not working the same so you just called me fat on accident yeah uh but but so 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 back 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 in those comic book days though before any of that language existed in in my world i i was just mad and it's classic like i was mad because i was a nerd and i was in i was i was picked on in high school and i didn't have any friends and i liked comic books and i liked the pop culture and 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 i i fucking learned how to look people in the eye and say, say please, please and, and thank, thank you. you yeah uh so well, you, you know why what, what, what's the, you know, you, that, that's that's your first instinct when you encounter somebody who doesn't like like behave quote-unquote right so like like that then like I didn't have have a lot of like you know, and then I did a bunch of crap that nobody ever saw. And th- there's Heat Vision and Jack, and you've got like a lot of hipsters in LA, right? Young writers saying, "Oh, that was really cool." I didn't do any conventions where people are coming up and having Heat Vision and Jack signed. Um, so you, you really skip right over to community then. When I, when I once again am interacting with large groups of uh, people who, who 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 are into something that I do, and. Uh, in that time, everything had changed. The internet culture had changed, and and but but also these community fans, very early on, revealed themselves to be a little more on the ball creatively. Yeah, They're, like they liked they they liked the show because it it it, it felt like it wasn't 
talking down to them. So the, it makes sense that kind of, there was a disproportionate amount of like editors and artists and uh, directors and, and singers and things that were attracted to the show. Um, and, and, and so it, it, and then meeting those people in person, it was like, I don't know, the show itself is like a solo, you know, it's a very optimistic, very humanitarian show. And so again, if you like it, so now not only are you kind of cool and talented, you're also nice. Yeah. So, so, so I, I, you know, the, the people at that, you know, the, those conventions, like, like when you come community at Comic-Con and you come out and you just, when there's you could you could just even sense from three thousand of them at once that they're kind of I don't know there's just like 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 it seems silly but it's like you feel the love and then when they come up to you and, and want a picture or, or anything like you, they're they're always they're always very nice whether whether they're on the spectrum or not wh- whether they know how to be nice <laughs> like yeah. could, like they they there's still the people who there's millions of them tons of them like 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 that that just don't know how to to be diplomatic or right. or, 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 or graceful socially but it's not it's not infuriating at it's all. interesting when i when i encounter people like my age who are like hyper intelligent and aren't into community which is kind of a rarity usually the complaint they'll have is it's too sentimental and what that says to me is like oh so you're you're ready to think but you're not ready to hug right, you're, right, you're, right. you're not ready to feel which brings us back to that yeah we have <laughs> we have all the potential we have all the equipment we need to uh to 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 move forward but we don't, we have none of the motivation yeah uh, so, I guess it's safe to say that everybody in this room who's here to interview you today, uh, fan wouldn't be the right word, but I guess we're kind of students of your story cycle. So, I wanted to ask, uh, do you feel like the tour completed its story cycle? Kind of, yeah. And it, it, it was it's weird, like, like how... Uh it, 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 you know, there was that point in the, in the story where I... <laughs> like realized that I wasn't really changing in any dramatic way. Therefore I probably wasn't the hero of the story. Therefore I quite, I possibly could be the villain. Like I matched all the characteristics of a villain <laughs> because it was my world that I had created. And I, I controlled, I, I was bankrolling this thing and I had dragged Spencer out and like he, maybe he was the hero. And I really, I, I, I was, I said it facetiously cause this is all just fun and games as all mythology should be. But, but but I do I do I, I still feel that way like I, I that that uh, the story of the tour like like I I don't know what threshold I crossed I don't I I, I don't know uh, what deep truth that I achieved is but there was structurally like you it did feel like for the first quarter it was different and then it started to. Uh, change and get experimental resulting in uh for instance the pittsburgh show where right. my girlfriend came out and uh you know was crying and 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 the performers were no longer performing the audience was no longer just a spectator everyone in the room excuse me burping again <laughs> was on equal ground I, 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 I bother to read significance and poetry into this stuff because it's because it's fun. I, I, I don't. I, I, there's a fine line between that and believing in horoscopes, but I, I, I just like to mythologize my surroundings. And I, I that that theater in Pittsburgh was it looked like a church. It was it was vast and but but somehow also womb like. It was a black box theater. There was no stage. I was ju- there was just a microphone. My feet were on the same floor as the as the audiences. The green room was this more than green room. It was sickly green. It, it had this fluorescent lighting. It looked like a hospital or like a scene from uh, Jacob's Ladder back there. And it was, it was I, I was uh, suffering from some kind of fever that I had picked up probably from shaking a million strangers' hands. Um, without you know taking a lot of echinacea or anything and screaming into a microphone and drinking every night, I, I I had succumbed to some kind of like 
sickness. My eyeballs were burning. My head was spinning. I was hot. I was tired. I was curled up in a fetal position on the couch in this sickly green room. The director started firing really weird questions at me about about uh, uh, my parents hitting me and, and, and whether or not the audience would ever like hear something from me that would make them not like me. It would make them not line up to shake my hand at the end of the show. Aaron came in and was having a really hard time with the people in the venue. They were making her move the merchandise table a thousand times and she she was out of sorts and i just kept saying like this has got to be the goddess this is this is you know everything is you know we've come down a road of trials we've adapted we've experimented but now things are kind of out of our hands we're 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 we're, we're going through a weird curtain here uh, everything is kind of weightless and w- you can't tell the difference between good and bad anymore uh you don't know who 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 the enemies are and who your friends are it felt very goddessy and it was right in the middle of the tour and Who's to say whether or not I made that happen because, or whether or not it really tends to happen halfway through any journey? It's like it really doesn't matter which chicken lays what egg there because the whole point of mythology is that humans kind of walk around with it, barf it up under the world around them, and see it everywhere they look. And uh, so and so, it just it shook down that way and it was like – it was it was amazing and beautiful. I hope it comes through in the movie that this thing happened. This weird... I'm assuming it would be around that general time frame. But is there a moment that to you is step six? I mean, for the listener, was there a moment when this is where we pay the heavy price? <laughs> I mean, it felt. I know that the shows in Kansas City and 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 Denver, which came at, <laughs> so, you know, were were they felt they felt shitty. <laughs> but I don't know if that's a nut. Like, like it felt like, like like in a world where the goddess was. So like amazing and emotional, like you know, wh- why why is the atonement with the father just a just a bad show? You know, <laughs> so, yeah. the fact that. The, but I mean, it was there was like out there, you know, the, the the there's icy freeways and things and and like 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 there there we went we went into a quadrant of darkness following Pittsburgh. Um, things started to get hard while at the same time we wanted it more than ever, which is, which is fitting for that, that, that third quarter panel of that circle on my silly model is like, that's the, that is the quadrant that is about, okay, you've, you've reacted and adapted. You've told, you know, that's only half a story. You've gone as far as you're going to go. You're now kind of on the return journey. You're operating under your own volition, and it's going to get harder and harder and harder because now you you know what you want supposedly, and you're 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 taking it for yourself, and and in so doing, you're you're struggling with and finally atoning with an impersonal cosmos that that when you're fighting it is your worst enemy is kicking your ass like Yahweh kicking Job's ass um, or Darth Vader kicking Luke Skywalker's ass. But then like at the point where you kind of realize that you're only fighting yourself, that, that this, uh, I think as Campbell put it like that, this, this scaly grip around you is, you know, is not some ogre God's hand. It's your own hand. And you, and you kind of realize that you are, for lack of a better way of putting it, you are God, and God is you. And 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 when when lightning hits your friend, it's kind of your fault. But also, <laughs> it's like like it, it, you stop stop being a baby, and you kind of get reborn as this thing that's capable of changing stuff. Now, did that happen to me in any in the context of doing a, a comedy tour? Like, I don't know. Did I cross a return threshold? Uh, like doing a better show? I don't. I don't, I don't it didn't really feel like that so much i haven't listened to all the recordings because we we started to just pump them out without editing them portland felt really good um that was a good san answer. francisco felt more like nashville where i just was kind of drunk and up there and having a good time but i i thought san francisco was an awesome episode uh, I, haven't, I haven't heard it so yeah. so i mean I, I i it would be interesting if like if there was some aspect <laughs> of those shows that i that actually got better as yeah. a result of doing all of them or you could point to the last quarter of the shows and go, oh, these these are all different. And they're all different because this the third quarter uh, was shitty in certain ways, and then and also because the second quarter was experimental in certain ways, and the first quarter was just, you know, uh, 
regular uh, minus that one crucial thing that's changed. That would be fantastic. Uh, uh, since you brought it up, um, you know, at one point last night, in a uh, Jeff proclaimed that you were the way he would change was you would become a man of the people, and then about <laughs> two minutes later, in a freestyle verse, you proclaim that you were God. <laughs> yeah, right. Are you Job or God at the end of this tour? <laughs> I don't know. Is that the ultimate question? Well, oh, that was the, well, I mean, it's like, if Spencer's a hero, and he is, because he's 23, he's marketable, like, like he's, and he's emotionally impacted by going in a bus and going out in the road in a way that I'm not. Um, the, the, you know, I, I, it's, it's possible that my journey was actually just learning that I long ago disinherited the right to go on hero's journeys because I long ago got, got, got to the point where I'm allowed to do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 I keep getting fired and my house keeps getting bigger. I keep getting better, better jobs. <laughs> I keep, I keep making people happier and happier as I keep pissing them off more and more. Like, and I keep sucking my thumb about it and going, I'm not going to clean my rooms. Everybody understand that. And st- instead of just going, okay, all right. Point taken. Like, like I, I am allowed to self destruct if I if I want. I am allowed to to do whatever to write a sonnet. I'm allow, allowed to to rap. I'm allowed to to rant. I'm a, I'm allowed to be happy. I'm allowed to be angry. Uh, okay, so what the fuck do I want to do? And uh, I, I, I yeah I, I, I am I. I'm am cer- certainly not Job because I have no patience and I am not only like, going to go, <laughs> but I you're no loyal servant, I guess, right? In a in a in a, in a weird way, like I'm, it's like you know when you, 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 I think when when you have a kid, which I have not yet, and I'm late on that calendar. A guy my age should have a kid by now, which shouldn't quotes, like biologically, right? I, I would. I would be at a point in fatherhood by now at forty where I would be struggling with the reality that when you have a child it means that you have kind of merged with the world and are no longer a character you are now an impersonal cosmic force like Yahweh in the in the book of Job you now are in charge of when the lightning strikes and keeping a kid from touching a hot stove and crossing streets without looking you don't really get to feel sorry for yourself cuz you can't go rock climbing or get laid in a dance club anymore that's something a child does not someone who has a child does so so if if maybe there's something i mean like maybe you don't have to have a child to to get to the point where it's like jesus grow up and stop stop waiting for yourself to be a hero yeah you know we were you, you know with tabloids like it's just like you know like like it's every every eight years or so there's a, a woman who d- decided that she didn't want to be a mother and does some horrible mythical thing to her children. And, and it's a big tabloid story. Cause it's, I think cause it, and everyone lines up outside her house and yells baby killer at the house, uh, which is a bold stance. Um, the, 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 <laughs> the uh, I think the reason we, 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 we react that way. I think the reason it makes tabloid headlines is because there is a kind of, uh, that that's that's a very human energy. It's like 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 you you give birth to these things that kind of eat you, yeah. Um, and uh, and and every once in a while, someone someone actually eats their kid, and and, <laughs> and everyone goes, "Hey, look, we all want to do that sometimes, right?" <laughs> <laughs> You, you you don't do that and then blame it on uh, fictional black people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned uh, at the Egyptian last night that there was a a conversation off camera between you and Spencer on yeah. the bus. And you described it as the lost climax of the film, in a sense. It was really cool, yeah. I was hoping you could elaborate a little bit on that conversation. I did a bad job of, of, of recapping it in the podcast. I, 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 I you know, I woke, we woke up on the, I woke up on the bus and everyone was asleep, and and the bus was stopped, and uh, the bus was getting an oil change in this in this place that looked like to me like a, the hangar of the Death Star, and I and I was like, I walked out of the bus, the driver wasn't in his seat, and there was just a bunch of bunch of mechanics changing oil and stuff that weren't interacting with me and i just i just kind of wandered into this little area in a in an oil change place where they have the coffee for the truckers and and the cashier is there spencer was sitting at the counter and uh and 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 then we he and he and i were the only ones awake and and we were just sitting in this in this truck stop and uh started to have a, a conversation about um the tour so far and uh 
the 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 strange behavior of of, of human beings that, that that make a special trip. You know, it's, we talked about souvenirs, autographs, photos, as all being kind of the same the same thing. Which is that we've, you know, there was a time in 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 the, in the world when a guy was out, you know, invading a village and he saw a flower that doesn't grow anywhere but that area and it, and it was so fragile and 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 it reminded him that he had a a, a a a woman that he loved at home and so he he picked it out of the soil and he he made sure it made the trip back home and when he got home he said hey i, I pillaged and i raped and i i looted but i also found this flower and it reminded me of you and here you go and for that reason you know there's a flower shop on every corner mm-hmm. and you can swipe your credit card or have your assistant buy a dozen roses and you just ship them and it's all set up for you and you can type in a, a coupon code and it'll be you know your mom will get a, a Flower and it, it's it, it, we, we likewise there was a point when someone grabbed a microphone once and like said something really funny into it and then stand up became an industry and then you yeah. had cut to people in the in a, in, a, in a club in Los Angeles having read Judy Carter's stand up book going like okay tell you a little bit about myself two three four huh, I can hear you breathing uh, meta comedy and kind of like doing this running thing where it's like. The unspoken thing is like, hey, look, I, 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 I've decided I want to be a comedian, and you're not really uh, helping me out here. Like, like, like it's, <laughs> yeah. this, this is a hard place to uh, f- fulfill my job entitlement. And it's, weird. it's like, wait, what, 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 do you, what do you mean? You, you grabbed a microphone? Like, 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 someone once did this without any any prompting, like, like, yeah. and, and they did it because they wanted to do it, and right. they did it for free. And uh, and and it's not, <laughs> but so, so, like, and and we, someone also once like went on some crazy vacation and had this amazing adventure and some part of their story ended up being manifested by this like you know seashell or something and so we have these gift shops and they're full of all this shit it's just like like a plastic eiffel tower when you go to the eiffel tower spencer and i were just talking about that phenomenon and and i think that you know he was 23 and kind of going like i'm so confused by it because it's so impractical it doesn't make any sense and I was saying the same thing, but I was saying, I think that, you know, but I do think the reason people do it is a noble one. I, th- I don't think they're doing it because they're the Borg. I don't think they're doing it because they, they want their life to be unremarkable. I think they're doing it be- for the opposite reason. I think they're, they're doing it in homage to something. And, and, and I, I kind of kept taking this tack of like going, I, you know, there is an explanation for stupidity. And there is, there is an impulse behind it if you trace it back. I want to think that anyway. And Spencer saying like, yeah, yeah, you, you really do want to think that, don't you? Like you, that really is important to you. And it was, it was, it was a, it was a striking conversation to me because, um, Spencer is like this really, really nice guy who bends over backwards for other people. Um, he you know, things spill on the tour bus floor and he's, he's the first one down there on his knees with a paper towel wiping up like uh, Mountain Dew and Cheeto crumbs that aren't even his. And he, he takes, he, he takes the world like, like up the butt, you know, like he, on a regular basis, like this thankless, like kind of posture and by, by his own admission, that was something he realized on the tour is that he, he indulges people too much. Um, uh, you wouldn't think that by looking at and talking to Spencer, like he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't walk around with a big fake smile on his face and, um, act nice. No, but I he, get it though. I get it. He like, really he, facilitates, yeah. like he acquiesces at every, at every turn. And, and, and I don't like, I'm lazy and stubborn and all this stuff, but inside me is this, yearning for people to turn out to be better than they are mm-hmm. and inside him i think it's like this this incredible resentment <laughs> the <middle laughs> of the way they are. and i and i and i think that's two people at two different stages of of, of, of growth and i think that I, if i felt like i was connecting with spencer and sharing this religion or i was like yeah we're both nerds we both uh have lived our lives like alienated and uh I over the years have 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 wandered into this idea that maybe everyone in the world is is stupid but they they might be stupid for some kind of glorious reason there might be like 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 there might all be geniuses underneath in different ways and I don't know kind of stuff that just sounds like smoke that would never lead to anything but but uh, like like and i think that i don't know i think that uh if spencer stops being 
too nice to people and starts like just doing whatever he wants to do, he's going to start going down this road that I, that I'm very familiar with. Mm -hmm. Like, like, he will, he will, he will start throwing tantrums and kind of asserting himself and going like, why can't I do what I want to do? Why is it, why are you all so stupid? Yeah. Um, uh, and, 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 and will ironically, that will lead all the way around the circle to this point where he's like, Oh I, I, yeah, I, now I'm, now I'm nice to people all over again, but now it's because I actually, I actually like them. Spencer's uh, uh, kind of proved to be a, a pretty big creative force throughout the tour. Like, do you do you think that uh, in the future you might take him under your wing creatively or professionally? Like, sure. I mean, I think that's already him? happened. I mean, yeah. I, I, what, what, that, that that as far as I'm concerned, that relationship already exists. Like, 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 I, a lot, not a lot of people have access to me like 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 um it, 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 so uh, if, if if spencer wrote a screenplay then i'm mm-hmm. going to read it I'm yeah gonna, <laughs> i'm gonna try to make sure i mean he's uh yeah he's definitely like entered my life and is and is there and uh to the extent that he wants anything from me in the way of like advice or help or or or, or service to him like it's gonna be hard to say no so I guess that has functionally happened. Can you yeah. picture his brand of genius working in a writer's room setting? Probably, yeah, yeah, I, uh, absolutely. I mean, he's 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 my kind of uh, writer for sure. Like I like because he he stays focused. He doesn't get defensive about his ideas, and he stares at a corner of the table, and he and he and he and what's in his brain comes out of his mouth. And it's like, like he's he's very good at brainstorming. He's very good at like. Like 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 taking other people's ideas and and embracing them to the point where they either break or become glorious. Um, that's what he's doing every night, you know, in these shows. And um, yeah, he's uh, he could he could certainly function in, in modern families writers' room if he if he wanted to. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, do you feel like I, this is a gear shift of some sort? Something we've touched on earlier in a way, but. Do you feel like uh, this tour was ultimately good for your relationship with Aaron? Yeah, I do. I do because I think that, uh, like, it was all about me, and it and it, and I and unlike if I'm sitting at home with Aaron, um, it, it I had an unprecedented license to uh, say this is about me, not about you. I had I had every 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 lazy narcissistic bad boyfriend's fantasy come true. I I, I twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. I had a a card I could hold up that said, "I am I, I am more important. I, I I am the center of this. I need to be prepared for this thing." Like like, and and it, getting that permission. Is like you know getting locked in the closet with the box of cigars. Like, like it, it's like okay, so like where are you going to take that in the end? You know, like 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 so now you have that, and you have your 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 girlfriend is is powerless, and if she complains about being powerless, you 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 could you could yell at her and still be the hero in the eyes of these people that showed up to have their community DVDs signed. So. Now that you have met with that goddess of getting all uh, getting all that permission, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do with that power? I actually have a, uh, <laughs> I, I we had these like lipstick cameras on uh, on, on our ears for, for for some of the time. They're really cool. These they're called Luxies. Um, they only shoot in standard def for about an hour, but they're incredibly they're 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 no bigger than a Bluetooth headset that a douche would wear, and 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 they Bluetooth to your phone, and you can frame up your shots with them. It's a, it's it's like it you know it's like uh, aliens you know like the head the head <laughs> the, the helmet cams that they had in aliens right. it, it, it's 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 it just you know you forget you have it on and but other you know you can record like everything that you're seeing I uh, I I got in a fight with Aaron one night and I went uh, down to the bus to get away from her 
partly because you know in, in the sense of like oh i'm gonna get away from her because she's being a, a drunk bitch but but also part of it was like i gotta get away from her because i'm being a piece of shit because i'm i've been drinking too much too mm-hmm. and we, we got in some stupid fight about something stupid and 90 percent of the, our fights are about about whether or not the other person is trying to pick a fight and uh and i i, I got away from it i went down to the tour bus and i poured a, a kettle on the rocks and i and i i put that ear cam on and I went in the bathroom of the tour bus and I, I talked to the mirror for like a half hour about my relationship with Aaron. And I, I, I wiped the footage. I put it on my laptop. I didn't give it to the director because <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want to take a look at it, but it might be, you know, if there's a story about Aaron and my re- relationship in the movie, it might be a fundamental, like, like brick in that wall. Uh, because it's me, the reason I want to look at it is because I, I was drunk, so I, it may be me being self indulgent and pretentious. Like I mean, like, oh, yeah. here's, here's the big Blair Witch moment where right. I I didn't want it to be that. I wanted to, I was, it was a confessional booth, you know. It was in this it was the thing, and I, I just you know I wanted to document this moment because the, the director's not always around when you're mean to your girlfriend and are thinking about it. And um, I uh, so I talked to the yeah I talked to the mirror specifically about like. Like, why am I, why am I a bad boyfriend? You know, like, why, why do I keep getting in fights with Aaron? Why, wh- what is it that I want from her? Um, and what, what, what is it that I'm prepared to give her and all this kind of stuff? And I, I, I recall coming to the conclusion that I need to grow the fuck up and, and, and be a father, you know, to, to fans and a father to my girlfriend and a father to, to, to Spencer, a fa- you know, like I need to like grow up it's like too late for me to to fight for the right to party it's not that's that that's the first half of a circle do you feel like uh you know the 24-hour intimacy of being with her on the tour uh expedited the process of you guys moving in together um i kind of i mean i remember deciding that it's 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 that that she should just move in and and i but i think i I had come to that conclusion before Pittsburgh when she actually asked on stage yeah. and it pissed me off that she asked. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that kind of delayed it. And then sure. I remember at one point thinking, well, if the Egyptian show sucks, if the final, final show, of the tour sucks, uh, bad enough, uh, uh, I, I can always fall back on creating a story by, by, by having her move in with me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it's we, kinda, it's we kinda, saw kinda, you do that. Last yeah. Night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the show wasn't sucking necessarily, but I, I got, cause I was like, okay, you know, also I really, I, I feel this way and I want, so let's, let's do it. it yeah. But, it, it was a nice bow to put it on. It certainly was like, 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 like Aaron, Aaron and I spend almost 24 hours a day together, uh, uh and have since our, the first night that we kissed. Um, we, 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 we are, we are, we have spent almost every night together we she we are we are our 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 one year relationship is is you know probably the, the the hours we logged in the first six months were probably like a couple other people's like three year relationships mm. and 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 so I already knew that i that i that that her moving in wasn't going to be a problem uh uh in the sense of oh god you're always around yeah. Uh, 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 I don't get to play video games or, or dance around naked or masturbate whenever I want to. I, I've, 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 I've th- th- I knew that wasn't going to be any more an issue than, than it was with us dating. But, um, I, uh, I do think like, like, like being on that tour bus did like, did, did, did help seal the deal in my brain. Be- and I think, I think part of it had, had to do with, again, like she didn't get anything she wanted on that tour. Yeah. Um, and, and it wasn't about like, Oh, when she doesn't get anything she wants, she, she holds up good. Like she fell apart and, and justifiably. So it, just it was a, more about a, seeing her fall apart and, and, and experiencing that as it's like, okay, that's, that's really as bad as it gets. Yeah. This might be more of a question for Aaron, but in your estimation, what did she want that she didn't get out of the experience? Me. My attention, I, I, my to exist. You know, she she was smart enough. She knows herself well enough that she, it was her idea to do merchandise on the tour because she knew about herself going in that if she was useless uh, and on the tour, like she was going to go insane. She's you know, the, the, I love her because she shares so much with me. Like one of those things is like she 
she likes to perform. She likes to be useful. She, she seeks identity like, 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 you know, ravenously. She, she, she knows who she is to the extent that other people are telling her. That's not, that's not self-actualization. That's the opposite, but it's, it's also exactly how I am. Like we are, we're trees in a forest that, that need people to come visit so that we can fall and be heard <laughs> and exist. <laughs> um, the, the, uh, so she, and, and, and it's like, like it's Harmon town and she's selling t-shirts and she's like, it, it, it's not, and it's not even about like, Oh, she's got to tap dance and, and, and be the star of the show. It was like, she was just out of control of whether or not I uh, patted her on the head and said, you look pretty today. She was, mm. she didn't, she she was more than ever didn't get to have that whenever she needed it. She didn't get to ask for it. She didn't. She didn't. She wasn't getting it. We 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 were we, we, when we weren't sleeping uh, in this bus that made it impossible to do anything but 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 pleasure oneself very discreetly. It's a, if if it came to that, like that's you can't you can't have sex in a tour bus. Uh, if you could, I wouldn't, cause it would be obnoxious to this. So, like, <laughs> right. My girlfriend was the only girl on a bus of 10 guys. So if I, if I somehow figured out logistically how to take her into a compartment of the bus and, and do it with her, I would only be being a gross person to my friends. I think, um, uh, it, the, 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 so you no sex on the tour bus, which we were on for 23 days. Uh, when we weren't, we were in a hotel pretty, pretty exhausted. Plus I'm 40. So even when I'm not exhausted, I, I, I'm not doing it as much as a 28 year old. Um, the, uh, uh, so, so it was like, you know, we were isolated. We were together 24 hours a day, but without an emotional, like, channel between us like i can see how that would make you want to create a living space together when you were home and safe and had time yeah it was like well it was also because it was like well jesus i really like being with her like i'm trapped with her and the the few times that she would go away she she goes to the bathroom or if she gets mad at me and, and, and walks away like i immediately feel the the vacuum and if that's happening on this tour, then then it's 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 the die is cast. Like I can't I can't be without her. So she she might as well move in, and we might as well get a dog, and 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 we might as well start start this thing down down that road because I can't be with anyone else, and I can't not be with her. Since you brought it up, uh, boy or girl dog, and what do you? think you might name it <laughs> uh <laughs> we were jo- we're, 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 i think we're going to be very organic about our about what we name it we're going to resist the temptation to decide on something we were joking about naming it groby because our, our tour manager was morgan groby and like um we, i don't know it just sounds like a nice dog's name and wanted to honor him for his sacrifices on the tour but why would you not do that well That's we're not perfect. well we got 75 days to i'm looking at, across my office at an advent calendar that Aaron made uh, 75 puppy squares. Oh, oh. We're going through a breeder and, and <laughs> don't email these guys and to, to let them know why going through a breeder is inhumane and, and why rescuing a dog is the only thing to do. I understand. I will rescue a dog um, uh, after my cat dies. Uh, I am, I'm going through a breeder and getting a, a, a very re- 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 respectable breeder that does not like, like mill puppies and throw the bad ones in the garbage. Like it's, it's, it's all very above board and the bad ones are recycled. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, w- I, I wanted a specific breed cause I want it to be healthy and smart and I don't want it to go insane for lack of things to do. So you don't want a, sh- a Sheltie that's, that's like what you, you're an asshole. Like I'm, I, I, I'm, I have a 200 IQ. I'm supposed to be herding sheep. Right. Um, uh, golden retrievers are, are like kind of, they're the breed that's like cool if their job is hanging out and uh poodles are really smart i wanted to mix two breeds to to mitigate the kind of genetic uh you know uh uh maladies that we have forced upon the species um uh and mixed breeds are always a little little healthier than i could you know i just if i got a golden retriever and i watched it succumb to hip dysplasia i would be like this feels inhumane because i i, I knew yeah. that this spe- this breed gets this thing because we've inbred it too much anyways the i i and i needed it to be a puppy uh, and a submissive one that's being crate trained, like in my house, in the presence of my cat, because my cat is a rescue cat, 
and uh, and and she's very emotionally vulnerable, and I've had her for a long time. She's FIV positive, so I worry about her immune system and her emotions. And you know, cats are weird. It's it's really hit or miss when you bring another animal into a cat's home. I, I I've made I've seen it go bad, um, and uh, and I I'm bound and determined to do everything I can to make this to get a dog, but make it easy on my cat. So for that reason, I'm going through a breeder and doing a very specific thing. I, after the cat's out of the picture and I just have a dog, if I get a second dog, I'll get a three legged one eyed dog from the shelter. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I promise. Well, we've touched on uh, Aaron and on Spencer on this tour. And I feel like the beats of their story are, are kind of obvious, but in your estimation, what is Jeff Davis's story in this tour? <laughs> I don't know. Jeff Jeff's going to be that guy in the documentary. That, I mean, Spencer's going to be the guy that steals the documentary. Right. The, in a good documentary, there's a character that's not supposed to be the 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 focus that like everyone a, goes like, "Oh shit, this guy." Our crumb shut in brother. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Example. That's a great example. As long as we went to the dark examples uh, at the risk of offending Spencer, I, I, I Spencer knows that he's not that guy nor nor is he this guy, but American movie, the uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the yeah, to, to, um, uh, uh, Mark's friend. Yeah, um, yeah there's a, in a good documentary. There's that guy that that, that you ki- that you're like, this is the fucking documentary. Yeah, that, that you know that that's going to be Spencer. Um, uh, there, the, there's also another option in the documentary to just be the guy that that's like, like, oh man, that guy's the coolest guy in the world, and I guess that's going to be Jeff because the asshole, like, he, you know, we we, we pull into a town and he. He breaks away from the pack and he goes to a bookstore and buys a book and then he finds a, a, a cool bar and, uh, and sits and reads Moby Dick while he does shots of Fernet Broncos. He, he, well, he, yeah, he, he wears suits and he needs them. He needs them. You know, he just needs time to get into his suit so he can do his show. Like it, it, the, the the documentary won't pick up on the fact that when he's denied that 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 control, like he gets a little snippy. <laughs> uh, you know, he, he's, 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 there's, there's, because there's, it's so rare to glimpse Jeff in like a bad mood. And so I know the camera's never caught it, which means that all you're going to see is this fucking knight in shining armor, like being charming and mysterious and intellectual and, and cool and, 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 and a man of the people too. Like he goes to dive bars and, and learns about everything. Fucking asshole. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to look like this weird fucking manic, uh, you know, like like guy that's like I think the story's gonna be like, Oh, he he loves his fans, but his girlfriend would like to know that uh she's pretty and he <laughs> just told her to go fuck herself. Um like what uh, what was your original motivation to uh, to film it to make the documentary? Uh I actually it was a really petty thing. Like I I, I was I was surfing through Apple TV and I saw that Craigslist documentary where the guy spends 30 days living off of Craigslist. Oh, okay, yeah. And it was kind of like a break. I, I was I was surfing through documentaries in general, and I've I've I, you know I this post Morgan Spurlock world of documentaries where where documentary has now come to mean um, uh, a celebration of, of 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 the self. Like I. I, I I did this for 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 thirty days, and I wanted to find out well what, what's going on, and, and, and it's all it's all voiceover driven. It's like Gonzo documentary, to, you know, that like 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 the these nine eleven documentaries on YouTube. And it's like I thought to myself, whoa, whoa, what's going on? It's like, well, what do you? <laughs> why don't you think more to yourself and then do some research and make a fucking documentary, you yeah. asshole? <laughs> um, but uh, uh, the uh, I that that Craigslist thing. I was I looked at it. I looked at the description of it, and then I think Aaron ended up renting it later. And I watched like ten minutes of it, and I, I just out of pettiness, just out of like je- I guess jealousy of the guy for having a documentary about him, mm-hmm. um, where he did something interesting for 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 a while. I was like, come on, it's like, like 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 does everyone just get to do one of these the way everyone gets to do a podcast? And then I thought, yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. So <laughs> instead, instead of being petty in your bed and like picking on some 22 year old guy that, that had this like clever idea and made his own documentary, just contribute, just do, do, do the same thing. And then you won't, you won't, you won't have to knock that guy. It's a real can't beat him, join him kind of situation. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, it was, it was a, and I thought about comedians of comedy and I thought, you know, like Pat, Patton at his keynote in uh, XOX, uh, I'm sorry, not XOXO, Patton's keynote at the Montreal, <laughs> Oh, festival. Man, so I was in the back of the room for that, and it was it was historical and uh, and hysterical. And he, for part of it, you know, he pulled out his he pulled the iPhone out of his pocket and uh, 
God damn it. There was this great moment of that keynote that, that, that uh, like you, I only know about cause I'm in the room and it never, it didn't, it didn't get, it didn't get, uh, uh, Pick perceived, uh, Patton pulled his iPhone out of his pocket and brandished it and warned the gatekeepers of the entertainment industry that 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 comics now have these studios in their pockets and that the world is changing for that reason. <laughs> and and within seconds of him doing that, someone's phone started ringing in the room. <laughs> I don't think Patton heard it; otherwise, he would have fucking clobbered that 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 tee up like it was yeah, a, like because like, it was so ironic. It was like. <clears throat> You know, on this high of like, yeah, these things are changing the world. Like, oh, and they're also ruining keynotes. Seeing the frustration <laughs> on your face when you recounted that anecdote that it wasn't captured yeah. might be at the heart of why there is a Harmon Tour documentary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, when Pat, so, and Patton talking about when, when, when he was brandishing that phone, he said, I you know, he used himself as, as an example and said, I got my friends together. I went out on the road. I made a movie. I shot it. You know, I, I had someone shoot it. I made a movie and I made money off of it. I went out there and I had fun. I did whatever I wanted to do. But he and that that, that stuck in my head. So it was there, that was there and the the Craigslist guy and and then um, then there was this other part of it, which was uh, me asking myself in the back of my head every week in the back of that comic book store. Am I doing something healthy back here, or am I doing something the opposite of healthy? Am I, am I, am I, uh, you know, am I licking my own wounds and and slowly like withering away? Uh, is, is this is this audience getting smaller and smaller because like I'm I'm just gonna end up rocking back and forth in a rocking chair, like like <laughs> like like talking about what a hero I am to myself on a porch somewhere? Not not a not a you know that's fine. But but uh, that's 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 uh, how else do you go out like fighting a volcano? Um, the, the the but 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 I just was wondering like am I is this activity healthy? Um, and uh, and so, like 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 and I think the idea of going to a comedy club in Phoenix and doing the same thing and seeing what happened had a had a lot to do with like answering that question. Um, and I think the answer is yes, it is very healthy because because if I because there are Harmon towns in every, in all of these cities, all these you know, hundreds of people bringing their community DVDs and their posters and a handful of people that had no idea I created a show called Community that 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 liked Greg Proops and heard my podcast and were just fans of the podcast, which was insane. Um, it, but at any rate, like kind of people out there that 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 now I know when I'm. When I'm talking in the back of that comic book store, I'm talking to them too, and I've seen their faces and touched their hands and taken pictures with them. And I, I, it's not like I'm going to render any services to them. It's still my job to just be narcissistic and prattle. But will that change the meltdown show? I think it will. I, mean, I think that I think the meltdown show will be healthier and a little more accountable in terms of like confession and stuff. Like I feel like okay, I really have to make sure these shows get go you know somewhere dark and deep before they end like it it, 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 because we really got it out of our system going from city to city when you go to portland your tendency is to get up on stage and say hello portland and portland goes yay and because you're in portland and you wikipedia their sports team you go like how about those 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 bumblebees and and that weather (laughs) and that famous donut shop down the street and you it's small talk it's and and meanwhile they've come to hear a harmontown show they they kind of wish that you would forget they were portland the same way your your three black friends wish that you would forget that they were (laughs) your black friends and just get to back to the D D or the saxophone that, that united you is that racist uh, saxophone the, the black people love saxophone <laughs> and D&D. uh, well, uh, uh yeah, yeah you can you can just put that down anywhere uh god i hope forever <laughs> I, mean, I could i could do this all day we're, we're why like, is there somebody like... oh yeah 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 oh is justin worried oh, fuck that guy <laughs> We're, we're closer. We're yeah, much we're, nearer to the end like than the beginning. So. Don't don't years, even so. don't let it affect you. This is a, this is my dream. I'm just <laughs> talking. Um, but, uh, but 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 check the record. Check the record. Yeah. All right. I am. Oh, we're in this it's rolling. Ball. It's okay. happy. Cool, cool. Doing the uh, get do, 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 going going to Austin and, and Phoenix and Nashville and Charlotte and do, and having that kind of like. Um, uh, w- 
the, this audience is strangers, so we have to get to know each other, and I have to talk about their town and, and, and make small talk, and oh shit, now that now it's time to play D&D, and now we gotta go. Right. So I'm just gonna rap about fucking your mama, and kind of like, <laughs> the, it, 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 it really put into my head the fact that okay now when we get back to meltdown the really great thing is like oh and there's no more i don't i don't get up on the microphone and go hello los angeles how right. about those lakers <laughs> right. um what's with the smog that's small talk yeah so so and so and nobody wanted me to do that in their cities and 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 nobody and i'm certainly not going to do it in los angeles and and and, and the, which means that like the, the, the last of that component of like, oh, I hope I'm putting on a good show for you folks can go down the drain and, 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 and what will remain hopefully will be condensed kind of like content. Like, mm-hmm. like, like what do I ha- what do I want to talk about tonight? Um, and, and, and how, how is it going to get deep and, 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 and confessional and hopefully funny and, you know, and he's, I, I think, I think the show will definitely be different for, because of the tour. Since you brought it up, uh, some of the nights on the tour, you really clicked with the freestyles. <laughs> and I just want to give you the opportunity to avoid controversy on the record. At any point, did you pre-write and pocket any verses? Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. I'm so proud of that fact. Like, I knew, like, I've, in the, in the uh, like, that, that is the whole, like, 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 like point of, of, of doing that in, um, uh, and it's that, and and that's the metaphor for the show itself, and that's why it's so important to like. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it it once you go down that road, if you're sitting in the wings before the show and you go, well, uh, I'm at the Egyptian theater. Uh, King Tut was an Egyptian. Tut rhymes with butt. Okay, all right, got it. If you if you go down that road, like okay, then you come out and you go. Uh, yeah, I met the Egyptian, like just like King Tut. F- fucked your mom's titties and I sucked her butt. Like, um, it, it, it uh, like if that, <laughs> then, then you are you are off for the rest of the of the rap of the rest of the night. Like you, you, if you're like, like they, they use that word flowing. I sound, it sounds ridiculous. I'm talking about rapping. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bad rapper. Put that whole disclaimer over it, but it's still an activity you can take part in. I'm, ba- I'm bad at flying kites too, but I do it for fun. The, 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 rap, the whole point of freestyling is like, is like, it's like speaking in tongues or something, you know, like, 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 like try That's the, I've tried to like, um. Yeah. Like. 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 I, I have nothing in my head when I when I do those things. It is like speaking in tongues because the dance that you do is so. It looks so involuntary. It, yeah. It, it's, it's like this toddler <laughs> dance. Jeff calls it. <laughs> That is, it is really satisfying because it's like it's like that that is that is that is genuine behavior that is not <laughs> that is not affected <laughs> that it, that is that is that is what exactly what my body wants to do. Um. That's what. That my body is calling dancing, uh, uh, and and that and what you're, what's coming out of my mouth is what my brain calls rapping. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the the bad side is that you hear a lot of shitty rap. You hear and you hear mouth rhyme with South eight thousand times, and and but the but every once in a while there's a little like like like, like oh shit that was sweet. We agreed that uh, <laughs> last night at the Egyptian yeah. at the Egyptian and Chicago saw like the best and the uh, oh, we actually played a clip of arlington when you had the seven black people on yeah stage. i remember when the black that people was were on stage were they, was i drawing energy was i was i i don't no, i don't think it was like so much that but you you just incorporated so many things you talked about the race issue you talked about how you felt uncomfortable you where you were taking a... the whole race issue right. and then you went completely <laughs> insane about washington dc and how the man was trying to hold everybody back yeah and fuck them and down the white house and stuff <laughs> yeah. yeah i said some shit last night like i'm a terrorist and al Qaeda is in the oh, house yeah. you said something, something about 9 uh, like, I, might, we, I might actually have to edit that for like actual like <laughs> national security right yeah like, 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 I'm, I'm 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 only 20 percent kidding like i like i i actually i woke up this morning going uh, i think i i it, and it's not it, it's like it's 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 like, like like giving someone an excuse you know like 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 this is that there was that guy that tweeted tweeted a joke about a bomb or something at an airport and, yeah. and 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 six hours after he got home they came to his house because when he tweeted it he was at an airport right and uh and they and they yeah he he, he got pinched and and, and, and and no one's protesting that arrest like it's, right. it's this is this is, these are times in which you're not allowed to say certain words in combination and i do recall like <laughs> like kind of 
I recall the words Al Qaeda in my rap, and I and I and I and I didn't follow it with our, uh, the worst people in the world. Right? <laughs> right. I don't I just know if I said they're my homies, but I but so, I, I, I just got it just got weird. Like I, I was deliberately trying to trigger some kind of CIA uh, right. uh, uh, carnivore system that's hooked up to a server. Um, you know, we're so we're kind of putting together like a two episode retrospective of just about the whole Harmontown tour. Cause That's kind insane. Of a, Does a, anyone listen to this? Uh, uh, some people, yeah. slowly yeah. but surely, more. <laughs> we have more. A, we have a couple of hundred subscribers, and and uh, and you know we've had a we've had a couple of episodes with quasi celebrity guests that. Uh, that uh, um, have gotten more, you know, but we don't give a shit about that. It's a labor of love. Like if you're yeah. you guys the podcast, are, podcast, you guys are the podcast cast. Yeah. like you, like, like like, but you have you have become infatuated with Harmontown because I went out on the road and did like one a day. Yeah, I feel the you know, like we liked it. The tour, yeah. yeah, we it was a it was something. You know, we have a scale, and uh, the best thing that you could be on our scale is a never miss podcast, which means that we never miss it. But uh, and and Harmontown was a never miss for both of us, and then. Uh, I, I, you know, as I said last night, I, I definitely remember feeling when when I saw that you dropped three episodes in a week, I was just like, I don't, I don't know that I'm going to be able to keep up uh, up with this. But then, like, I noticed that I was pushing other stuff that was less important to me, <laughs> and then aside. eventually and, like, feeling like, like this... they're not coming out enough. Like yeah, there need yeah. to be more. Yeah. Like when, whenever there was like a, a day or a two day gap, we were just like, what's up? And and I remember Arlington had some technical issue, and I couldn't listen. And I was like, do I listen to Pittsburgh now because it's up? Uh, I don't want to <laughs> ruin the chrono- uh, uh, chronology logical order of everything um but yeah we decided uh you know we did a retrospective of paul f tompkins and, and oh, nice. on that episode uh we did riff suites because that's what he does at the beginning of his podcast and uh so i think we're gonna try our hand at freestyling when we get home and, we, nice. and we're putting this episode together i recommend do you have it. any do you have any advice and now that you are an experienced mc well <laughs> i mean there's 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 advice that i've that i've Adap- uh, uh, adopted to survive, which might be cowardly advice, which mm-hmm. is like uh, uh, try really hard to uh, end your uh, your lines with long vowel uh, words, right. like, like like so that, so that you have wider options available, <laughs> like uh, like like. Um, uh, but that also results in you saying "day" and rhyming it with "gay" a thousand times, like right. like like kind of like like. Is it, is it, but. Here's advice that I don't personally take that I want to try to like start taking. Like when you hear Jeff freestyle on the podcast, like he's better at this. Like he, he go he goes arrhythmic. Like he doesn't he 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 and that's that's like what what Eminem does and stuff. Like yeah, I noticed rappers, there was a couple like, of times that he would he would he would use his rhymes in the middle of his line. Yeah, and it's know? like 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 that. Good, real freestylers like like tend to do that. Can they do think that, phonetically yeah. and they go they go like you got a hat and a cat and you're fucking with that and what do you think about that? But they're they're not just worried about like like this kind of bar prov like maybe. 80s like like a, yeah. a second city kind of improv rapping that i'm doing which is like i'm going to use this word right now and right. there's the word that rhymes with that now um the 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 uh i i wish i, I want to break out of that i think because i keep going it's like it's a it's it's a joke that people have embraced but the reason i keep saying i fucked your mama is because that's like it's styrofoam peanuts. It's like I I go like yo. You, uh, for, first I say something declarative like like yo I'm up here and I'm looking at some lights and then I imme- now my brain automatically goes like I fucked your mama so hard that day turned to night. Right. Like 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 it it it's 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 funny but it's like it it also like like I I think at some like. I, I, like that's indicative of like all this this, this this rut that I'm in that's like rhythmic. So it's, everything's becoming like Dr. Seuss, and I, 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 I it would, if if you guys are going to start experimenting with it, I would recommend you don't learn that bad habit and like try do to do feel, what Jeff does. Do you feel like fucking mamas is your your hip hop training wheels? <laughs> yes, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> like, <laughs> like you. it's my it's it's it's, it's yeah. as I said to Mark Marin last night. It's my N word because <laughs> uh, he was confused by that. But like, I, it's, if I could say the N word when I was free. Yeah. Styling like I, it, my freestyles would be littered with it. Right. <laughs> I, I remember we used to we used to fuck around with it at like parties when we got drunk. Like d- like we'd get in a circle, all the you know like, like dorky channel one hundred and one people. We would sometimes we'd get in a little rap circle around the keg or something, and I, I constantly fucking without fail the same way every time jeff looks at the clock it says 9 11 every time i use the n-word demorge brown would walk by uh, 
our friend from Channel 101, and it just like no nobody's better at the straight man of that bit than Demore. It's like the look on his face. It's just, <laughs> It's neither condemnation nor outrage. It's just kind of like disappointment, but not not in an activist way. Just kind of like, so he's such a sad man. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, so, so because I can't I can't you know like because it's fu- it's it's a funny word when it's not making anyone uncomfortable. When it's not when it's not I, the reason I don't use it is obviously because it may, it make it, impu- it makes people it distracts people. It, it makes them have to think about the word too much, and then you're not having fun. But when you're in your kitchen and like like rapping about making a sandwich like by yourself or just your friend is there like i i that that word the n-word is like can get pretty fun in a freestyle rap because it can be a <laughs> noun it can be an adjective it can be and it's i don't know just like like yeah it's uh I have, I have a very similar story where I uh, I met a black guy whose name was David Gilmore, and I started talking to him about Pink Floyd, and he was completely uninterested. <laughs> he was a, a door-to-door salesman, and, and he he walks away from my door, and I felt like a, I felt like you know middle-aged white classic rock guy or whatever. Right. And so, I you, just so you just compensated. I yelled, "I love Jay Z," <laughs> for no reason, to my own horror. And he didn't even look at me. He like stopped and shook his head and looked at the ground and then kept walking. <laughs> I'm the biggest fucking racist in the world right now. I love Jay Z. Okay, it's, I do, but uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Contextually, he's great. Right? Uh, <laughs> do you feel like your uh, the whole experience of the road trip uh, has inspired any type of new creative projects, uh, or or maybe? Uh, sent uh, uh, something that you're already working on in a different direction i don't know not really basically what i'm asking is uh, are you gonna make a road trip movie (laughs) uh, (laughs) besides the document oh no no probably not i think those are i mean those are i i i wrote a script for a road trip for for a road movie once and then I, i like over the years i've realized that road movies are it's like voiceover. It's like it seems like a crutch. It's like, yeah. oh, th- in this story, we're literally crossing a threshold and literally going on a journey. And- <laughs> I got, I take umbrage with that, Dan. I disagree. I feel like it's a great American art form. You're right. You're movie. right. I, you know, the, as easy as that, I backpedal because my, it's one, just of my, one of my all time favorite movies is Midnight Run. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, absolutely. It's just been done worse more times than it's done been done. Worse. I agree. Yeah, yeah. So well, same as voiceover <laughs> and like, 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 there's movies that are important for to know what the character's thinking. But yeah, I, I don't know. I just I see those billboards where it's two people and there's a steering wheel in the in the in the shot and I'm, I, I I I don't I don't know if I could ever take pen to paper and fade it in a road movie. Right? <laughs> so you're you're currently working on three pilots uh, and I was wondering you've mentioned it oftentimes in context with the tour that you're turning forty was an impetus for it. Uh, was another secret impetus of it to maybe go out and party with your friends and have fun before maybe life got a lot more serious oh, and more absolutely. oriented? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That was a huge part of it. That's what I. That's why I was willing to spend a bunch of more money on it than I might make back, is that uh, um, even if the movie does nothing, even if there is no movie, if we look at the footage and go, this is stupid, let's, let's abandon ship, then... Then what I did was spend somewhere between a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars on myself uh, <laughs> for a month long trip with my friends and 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 if you 're going to do that once in your life like like you should do it on your fortieth birthday, I think because you're never going to have one of those again, and also it's very clear that you're it's like jesus really like forty is is a that's a big number man it's it, it, it like it really because it really sinks in like you are. Who are closer to the end than the beginning. Yeah, I'm 35 right now, so I'm, yeah, I'm it, it, 35 is the new 25. Like 30s are the. It's like we've. I, I felt I, I. I didn't like n- now that I am 40. Like I am constantly thinking about uh, uh, like my biological clock. Like the fact that if I had if I got if I got Aaron pregnant tomorrow, I'd still be 40 years older than my fucking kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he was born, and uh, that's that's gonna be weird. I'm gonna be 50 when my kid is 10. If I if I have a baby tomorrow, and right. I'm not going to, yeah. so so I, I, I've I've actually I've become kind of like obsessed with that. Yeah. Like, 
I have, well, I have a son that's five years old. He was born when I was 30. Oh, and I he was born like 10 days after my 30th birthday. And so, it, yeah, for me, and and yeah, I don't know. I I remember making the decision that I wanted to have a kid before I turned 30. And I now I'm like, I don't know if that serves any of us. <laughs> you know, like it might have been better for me to wait till I was yeah. 40 and just be in a better position to be a... Yeah, our friend. Uh, I mean, Los Angeles is a great place because you can you, you 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 all you have to do is swing a cat and you can hit 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 someone who's doing it differently and it's mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. Uh, our our friend David Butler, uh, uh, who we sang about last night, he 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 just had a child a little a little while ago, and he's he's fifty or more. Like he's so he'll be he'll be a hundred when his kid is his age, and uh, yeah. Uh, but I think he'll probably. <clears throat> He's 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 gonna be a great dad, and his kid's gonna have a great life. So I guess it's what's what's normal. Um, do you believe that there will be another Harmontown tour? Um, I think I mean you know, the, the obvious the answer in my head is that if the movie is good, if it's enjoyable, mm-hmm. um, then then we do Harmon World. Got to do it. Got to go. Got to go to Toronto. Oh, gotta yeah. go to Edinburgh. Got to go to. Got to go to Afghanistan. Got to. <laughs> <go. laughs> Got to go to some weird Scandinavian venue. That's, yeah. uh, that's always got to be in there. We had a good time in Sweden. Uh, so at this point in the interview, our associate producer, Jeff, uh, had a question for you, Dan, if you wouldn't mind, Jeff. <laughs> is this a is this a regular segment? No, he 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 was kind of a you know I mean he he's never really been a part of the podcast before, but he was kind of the inspiration for actually coming down here to do this. And and he interviewed Adam Goldberg last night. And yeah, really? a job. yeah, nice. Which was Jeff an question? Interview. It's a Jeff question. <laughs> he's not gonna be in the shadows anymore. Jeff <laughs> question. <laughs> it's time for Jeff's question. With Jeff. I think that jingle is uh, even better than getting the answer to this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a segment now. Yeah. <laughs> now it's a segment. Now that we have a jingle. Uh, well, uh, Dylan and I are, are, are trying to start a, a career in the entertainment industry, but mostly in film. Uh, what, what would you suggest as, as the uh, sort of medium to focus on all other things being equal? Uh, do it, trying to sell a script or try to produce our own independent film or web series? Or Oh, boy, that's tough. Um, I mean, well, if what you ultimately want to do is, is make content, then, then start with making content. I, I I am a screenwriter because I I, I I I I wanted to like actually be the guy that wrote the documents on paper and then handed it off to the people that made the movie. I specifically wanted to be that guy, like uh, you know, and and, uh, and and so for that reason, I I jumped into that medium, and and also I did it way before the times changed as much as they have. So mm-hmm. now more than ever, because you can. If you, what you want to do is make movies, then then the way you establish yourself as as and put your hat in that ring is you make a movie because you can now, um, uh, and uh, yeah, and, and 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 but but if your you know if your passion is for yeah, I don't know why am I qualifying that answer? That is that is my answer. Yeah, you just, so like the idea of selling a movie like like through the normal channels because you inevitably want to be Broken Lizard or something, mm-hmm. I I. I, I I think it's so much easier to just go, "Hey, we're Broken Lizard." Like, like, yeah. like I, I have a feeling that's probably what they did, and 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 let alone you know today's Broken Lizard, right? Um, and we, while we had you, we wanted- <laughs> Jeff. Question: <laughs> That was Jeff's question. <laughs> it wasn't a request or a suggestion. He interrogatized, and we were not surprised to find that Jeff's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> so on point, They're so accurate about incredible. Well. <laughs> uh, okay, so since we're kind of on this generating your own content kind of thing, this isn't necessarily a very deep question, but uh, do you have an all-time favorite Channel One Hundred One show? Hmm. I think. Uh Shit. I mean, there's hundreds. Um, what was it? 
like I really liked um uh, a lot of the stuff that Ryan Ridley was doing like he's here now working on Rick and Morty and we collaborated on Water and Power but but um Ridley did Wastelander and he 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 did Phone Sexers which I thought was it was it was it was really cool when that when when that show was running. I don't know. It was like 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 it was a perfect blend of ironic drama and uh, and I don't know characters that you believed in, but obviously kind of like in an overall comedic context and and a lot of genre manipulation. Um, I'll, I'll 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 go with phone sexers, but cool. with the asterisk that it's like. Give me a break. There's so many, so many shows, <laughs> so many shows, and then like, like also so much volatility. Like, like it's like House of Cosby is like one of the greatest pilots in the, in, in history, and then like you know, a couple good episodes, but then it got assassinated, and um, like, like, like so many shows that are like, 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 like holy shit, that was like the greatest. Like that thing had five of the greatest episodes, but then also six horrible ones or something like that. But, um. You know, there's a, there, there's so much. Do you uh, w- what do you feel um, would be the pros and cons of uh, you know for a young filmmaker to go through a network like Channel One Hundred and One versus going it alone and kind of having the experience of building their own audience and stuff? Well, I I mean <clears throat> I'm I'm biased, but also but but I, I just i don't think there are any cons because at channel 101 which is non-profit and, mm-hmm. and no no there's no there's no agreements you know it's the, all your stuff stays your own yeah and, uh no money changes hands at any point the audience isn't even paying to be there so like you are working alone as much as you want to yeah you're, you're just gaining the, the the benefit of a deadline and uh and 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 uh the the, the feedback from an audience in the in the most brutal and practical form there is which is do we want to see you do this right. more um but not to mention the fact that if you're there in the audience you can hear where your jokes are landing and not landing mm-hmm. where your stories are, are working and not working and on top of all that uh, you know you 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 join a fraternity as much as you want to or as little as you want to of uh of like-minded creatives and differently minded creatives that 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 you know it's it's like a skull and bone society that you can you can take or leave. Mm-hmm. It's like you'll you'll meet people that are that are that are good at stuff you're not good at, and um, like like you can you can call them and they'll show up with their boom mic or their green screen. Or do you feel like uh, you're you're uh, you know the? I feel like uh, what Dustin Marshall is doing with Feral, Feral Audio is very similar to what you're doing or what you did with Channel 101. Was that like part of the thought process of using him on the tour and 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 you know just using him uh, to engineer the podcast? I guess his philosophy. Yeah, yeah. I just I, yeah. I mean, Dustin is a is a, is an incredibly passionate uh, mm-hmm. uh, guy. Like like, and when you when you get into engineering crafts like editing and 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 recording audio and stuff like it's it is uh, it is all the more possible to find people who are doing it because they really want to direct but uh you know i had the equipment and my dad worked in audio and right. um dustin is 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 i never thought i'd meet someone that was passionate about producing a podcast mm-hmm. period yeah um he's he's and 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 so he's driven by that which being and the more passionate people are the less you have to uh, be a bad guy in a, in a, in a collaboration because yeah. you, you never have to go. Like, All right, everybody, gather around. Now, here's the thing: this is important, uh, and uh, we, what we did last week wasn't good enough. And like, like uh, just, people are staring into their coffee, going, oh, "Shut the fuck up!" I hope you get fired. <laughs> um, the, like, like, yeah, it's, it's like when you're working for no money, when you're, when you're pursuing labors of love, like you, you want to surround yourself with people who share a religion. And uh, and I thought it would be a good experience for Dustin to like go out in all these different rooms and 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 I knew that that would be the highest chance we had of getting quality audio in those rooms and for the movie. Yeah. Because we'll use Dustin's audio for the actual documentary scenes in which I'm performing and, um, uh, yeah. Well, Dan, uh, that's we've reached essentially the end of our line of questioning for you. I know it's a shame, but I wanted to say we're huge fans of Harmontown, but we're also just 
enormous fans of this medium of podcasting. And thank you for doing this tour. I think it is the coolest thing that has happened in the brief history of the podcast. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I, I, I podcast. I, I did. Yeah, it was interesting talking to like club owners on the road about how podcasting had changed everything. And uh, um, there was a guy in Bloomington, Indiana, that was like he got it. And then there was a guy in Kansas City that did not get it. Uh, like, 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 and it's interesting. There's all these clubs out there, and like, like people. Like like pod, yeah, it's weird. Podcasting is such a such a strange phenomenon because it's not based on technology. It's not like oh, we learned how to be able to do this, so we're doing it. It is like blogging. It's like a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, right. Um, and it, it's it, it's very difficult <laughs> to say like, well, where is this leading? Are people going to just start doing video podcasts when the bandwidth allows for it? But it won't. It won't. Will never be the same thing. Yeah. Because you 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 people are chopping their carrots in their kitchen and listening to someone talk for two hours or so. Uh, you know, like like it's it's a personal relationship. It's like it's like going all the way back to radio, but with all of this like futuristic technology. Yeah, well, well, that was a phenomenon with you last night. Yeah, right? last <laughs> night I I had a couple of beers after the show. I smoked a little pot, and then uh, we were talking about the interview. And he was he was you know he was like, well, in, in journalism school, the first time that we mention somebody's name, we should uh, you know we should say their full name. And I think it was a Spencer question that we were doing, and I just kind of went on this weird vitriolic rant where I was like, no, we're reinventing the format. That's <laughs> fucking radio, man. And this is a community. And I feel like I feel like that's what podcast is. You have to work to have a podcast or to to get a podcast into your head, you know. And 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 you're choosing that particular thing. And like this is a community. And and we've mentioned Spencer Crittenden a million times on our podcast. And so anybody that's listening to this already knows who he is. And Check like, the it's tape. Different. I just said Spencer because not because of his Mr. Smith goes to Washington final stand moment <laughs> but because from the second word started leaving his mouth I did not care anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was just the old guy who obviously cares too much about <laughs> our uh, our podcast and what it means to me. You may have just gotten too drunk and forgot to say someone's last name. Uh, yeah, that, that, pulled that the Harmon awesome. and, yeah. uh, <laughs> got got outraged. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all the questions we had. Dan, uh, right, thank guys. you for doing the podcast. Well, thank you for doing a podcast about podcasts. Yeah. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> it needed to happen. <laughs> it's like civil rights, you know. It just was time. Yeah. <laughs>